Hi everybody. This is a um, video tutorial about abdominal exercises or ab strengthening exercises for um, people who have osteoporosis or osteopenia. <clears throat> Excuse me. So typically women, but not always. Um, just some general, a couple general things before I get going. Um, if anything causes you discomfort, you need to not do it, right? If you do an ab exercise or one of these exercises and the next day you know or you feel something, that just means that that's not right for you at this time. It might be a little too challenging or um, given your condition at the moment, just might not be the right exercise. So always listen to yourself. Um, the other thing is sometimes when somebody has osteoporosis, they might also have something else going on like arthritis and there are a million kinds of arthritis or repetitive stress injury I talk about that as far as the wrist is con concerned so um, again uh, if it hurts don't do it if you know that something is not available to you do one of the modifications for those of you who have been with me in class usually I go over modifications and I'll do so here too but um, and you can always email me if you need a suggestion for how to make things comfortable for you. All right, I'm gonna talk about one thing about how to get down um, from a standing position onto your mat. I don't ever talk about this in class because the bulk of, of uh, people have a way that they like to get down, but I'm gonna just talk about it. Sorry, I've cut my head off. But if you would come to a kneeling position on one knee or at lunch, from here, you're gonna make your way down to two knees. The reason I'm teaching you this is because I want your, your spine to stay straight. I'll talk about that in, sometime here going forward. For right now, we're gonna talk about um, just how to get up and down. And then with a nice long spine, you're gonna to come to that hands and knees position that we're in lots of times. Again, think about keeping your spine nice and, and long. I'm going to reach my arm and leg out away from me. I'm gonna come down onto my side. Again, my spine stays nice and straight the whole time, and then I'll roll to my back. And then to get up, I'm gonna to come to the other side. I'm gonna push myself up. I use my leg as a little bit of leverage, but again, my spine is nice and long. So, let me show you this. This is my stand-in for a spine, since I don't have a spine handy. Imagine these are your vertebrae. Right, there's a little cushioning in your own spine between each vertebrae. Now, pretend like this is your head. Your head is essentially an eight to 10 pound bowling ball. And when we're upright, like I'm seated now, or when you're standing, that bowling ball of a head puts pressure down on your spine. It compresses your spine, right? So. Um, that is challenging, that is an issue for those of us, I don't, for, for those of you who have osteoporosis. Um, and so the idea is we wanna keep this spine nice and long. When we're standing, when we're lying down, and not allow any roundedness to happen. What do I mean by rounded? You can see this is super stiff, it won't move. Substitute this for my spine roundedness, right? If I am kneeling this way or standing this way, and this is a stand-in for my spine, this is not a good position for my spine. This is okay for my spine. So if I have osteoporosis, this rounded C shape is a no-no. This back bend shape is an okay. The same translates when I'm down on the floor. Right, so this rounded C shape, not good. A back bend would be all right, I won't replicate that here. Seated, again, we're not gonna round. It's okay to come into that back bend shape. And so that is because the head is compressing the spinal column. There's one place where 
your head doesn't come into play compressing the spine. And that is when you are in hands and knees. Right, so here I'm all right to be kind of in this rounded, crunchy shape. That C shape that I talked about here is all right when I'm in hands and knees. That's about the only place. So just FYI. All right, now let's get down to some exercises, shall we? So in general, when I'm on my back doing ab exercises, and most of us, when we think of ab exercises, we think of crunches or some kind of version of something here, you know, your traditional sit-up that lots of people do, right? Not available to those of us, those of you who have osteoporosis. So when I'm down on my back, laying on my spine, I want to imprint my spine down into the mat. And with my feet down, we'll talk about levers for just a second. With my feet down, this becomes a little bit um, less work, right? So there's stress when I'm doing ab work, there's stress put on these muscles along um, the whole torso here between my rib cage and my hip bones. So if I'm here and I pulse my arms, this is a very basic version of the hundred, not so challenging. If I pick my feet up, so now that they're not in contact with the mat or with the floor, a little more challenging already. You can feel your abs turn on. The other piece of this is the farther away from my knees or the longer my lever is, right? So short lever, a little bit longer, but still a short lever, a longer lever and a shorter lever. So hopefully that makes sense. So if you're struggling here, back it up. If you're struggling here, stay here. If you're struggling here, bring it back in. If this is super easy, you can move it away a little bit before you straighten your legs. So head for all these um, lying down positions, your head is going to be uh, remain in contact with the mat. So here, we can pulse our arms. My abs are turned on. There's nothing relaxed about this, right? So I'm pulsing, pulsing, pulsing my arms. I'm working the back of my tricep. And this ability to keep this nice and stable while I'm doing this is a core challenge. All right, so that's one version. So here, 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 here. Those are some of your options. So that's a modified version or a, an osteoporosis safe version of the 100. We can also work the um, lay or the ab muscles by moving one leg. We can imprint our spine, put our hands down, really activate like you're glued to the floor, push the opposite leg, so I have my ankle flexed and the opposite leg is rooted into the floor, and I can do circles. Again, the same idea as lever length or how far away from the center of my body I get. This is easier than this. Now when I'm doing this big circle, I don't want anything to rock and roll. I should be able to put a cup of hot cocoa on my belly button and not let it spill. And whatever we do in one direction, we do in the opposite. So big lever, this can be done with a small lever. And once you're starting to get a little bit stronger, maybe you'll take both legs at the same time. Again, don't let anything rock and roll here. Good. And eventually you could even do both legs. Much more challenging here. Again, I'm gonna, I can't reiterate enough. Don't let this spine come up off the mat. Imagine you're super glued to it and nothing will move. Now, as I'm going through exercises, what I'd suggest, you pick one or two in each position that I'm gonna do, get strong at it, and then add something else or incorporate another exercise, depending on how much um, time you wanna spend on it or attention. So leg press, I pick up one knee at tabletop, the other knee's gonna just be bent, and I'm gonna pull the knee in toward me as I'm pushing this away. So there's an, a sense of opposition happening, but my tailbone does not pull up off the mat. So this is nice for low abs. I think most women think that they have low ab issues. Um, the other thing I'll say about these exercises, these never get easier. So 
you're never going to come to the place where you say, oh, I can do the hundred and the leg circles and these and I'm just easy breezy. That doesn't happen. It, um, your body is super smart and will continue to recruit more muscle, more muscle and, and keep advancing you so that you'll get stronger and stronger throughout the core. We have muscles that we can see and then we have muscles that we can't see more structural muscles. I may talk about that in class at some point. All right. Now the other thing we can do here, we can bring both our knees up to tabletop and we can touch down, right? Just keeping that 90 degree bend in our knee, touch it down, bring it back up and then replace with the opposite side. Now again, my spine is anchored. If that's too hard, I can touch down closer to my booty. If that becomes easier, I can start to walk things away so the angle of my knee gets a little bit bigger and I touch down toward the end of my mat. Again, it's super challenging. Eventually you could do both legs, right? Everything's glued together. There's no rocking and rolling. Speaking of both legs, I could push both legs in. I can shoot both legs out. I can push both legs in as I'm resisting with my hands. I can reach my arms and legs out. Now again, think about lever length. This with a long lower leg is harder than here. Right? If you have shoulder uh, issues, you can modify those as you go along. Um, let's talk about leg scissors. So one leg up, one leg um, is going to float down. Good. Now again, we want no twisting or torquing through the center. Eventually you can pick up the speed. You can make the legs meet farther away from the center of your body. All right, um, I think I have covered a lot of the exercises that I would like to lying on your back. If you know of an ab exercise laying on your back, it can probably be modified. Here's a big disclaimer. I wish I had a big neon light that could flash in front of me. Never ever at any time does your head lift in an ab exercise when you're lying on your back. If you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, one of the O's, this never happens. That includes this, right? Not safe. This is kind of a double whammy. We not only have a twist, but then we have a crunch. So that's a big no-no. All right. This is not, this next segment is not necessarily a back, I'm sorry, not necessarily abdominal exercise, but it's a great place to focus for those of you who have one of the O's. The other thing is, when I do a lot of ab work, I need to balance it with work on my back. I don't want to become the hunchback of Notre Dame, right? Or as my mom used to say, born in 1927, don't want to have a dowager's hump, right? So in order to do that, we need to work the posture muscles of the back so that we keep this nice, long spine, right? So we're looking like this and not like this. We don't want to reinforce this position. We need to work in opposition to strengthen the other side. So what are some options here? On our bellies. We can put our hands underneath our shoulders, reach our legs long, pull your belly button in and up. If at any point you feel any compression or any sensation of uncomfortableness in this low back, just stop. Don't do it. Or keep it smaller or separate your feet. All right, so we're going to rise up. Now my hands are here to support me, but really I could do this without my hands, right? My back muscles are pulling me up. The whole time I'm going to keep my belly um, button lifted. All right, I can do leg kicks here. Again, belly button's lifted. I'm gonna flex, I'm gonna kick, kick, and then I'm gonna reach out and lengthen. So I could alternate and stay on one, uh, or stay on one side, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna alternate just for heck. So kick, kick, reach out long and set it down. So this gets a little bit lower in the back, again, keeping you upright. Now we can uh, progress this. You can lay on your belly with your hand stack or your head stacked on your hands, which are stacked like firewood. You can double kick, double, double kick. Now don't let your booty pop up, right? Keep your booty, um, your front body anchored to the mat. 
and you're going to kick, kick, and then you're going to reach your legs long, pick your thighs up, pick your head up, and bring your arms up and around. And then set everything down and restart. I'll do that one more time. So it's a kick, kick, reach up like you're swimming, and back down. And speaking of swimming, we can work on the oblique muscles. I'll talk about those when I sit up in just a second here. So um, the muscles that make a big X across your back. So if I pick up my left leg and my right arm and then set it down, my belly button's lifted the whole time. This is core work as well. Opposite arm and leg lift and set it down. Eventually, you can pick up the speed. But imagine you have hot cocoa on your back. You don't want that to spill. All right. So often, we think of ab muscles, this forward crunching movement, that six-pack, and then the muscles that cause rotation. There are ways to work those without crunching and rotating. Um, and there's a corresponding set of those kind of muscles on the back side. So that swimming works the obliques on the back side. The single leg work when you're laying on your back works those obliques on the front side. All right. Um, for though, for I would say for every exercise I'm going to talk about, um, you're not going to do more than about 10 or 15 of them move on to another exercise. You don't want to reinforce the same thing over and over and over again. You want to switch it up, keep the body guessing. All right, so I'm going to come to a side lying series and you can progress this too. Um, number one, you'd be lying down with your head resting on your bicep or if that doesn't work for you, put a pillow or something under you if that does not work for your shoulder or your arm. Now, I want you to create a mouse house. Right, a little um, arch between the floor and your waist, your natural waist. I'm going to shoot that out. I don't like that. All right, that works those obliques again. All right, now, if I need to bend to stay upright, that's fine. This is a balance pose as well. Otherwise, I'm going to reach my legs out long so they're at the front far corner of my mat. I'm going to pick my heels up. And from here, I can lift the leg up and back down. I'm going to really, don't make this a Jane Fonda lift and lose your mouse house. I want the mouse house to stay there. So I can lift up and away and lower as if I'm slogging through pudding. Good. Now, again, 8 to 10 to 12. If this position is easy, if you have your hands in, in front, take your hand off. If it's still easy, bring your hand up. If it's still easy, come here. Now this will really challenge the obliques because I'm on my side, right? So I'm not sagging. I've got some nice lift under here. My, my bottom heel is lifted. I can start again and put my hand down. I can lift and lower. That's easy, I can put my hand here. That's easy, I can put my hand here. I'll give you the next version. Most people don't come here and I'll warn you, my version will not be too pretty. I don't typically work here except for a couple of reps. I'm standing on my knees. I'm going to do the same leg lift. I'm going to put my hand underneath my shoulder. And hopefully my hip is over my knee. I'm going to push my hips forward. So if you looked at me from this angle or this view, I'm nice and parallel. And I can lift and lower, lift and lower. Very, very challenging. All right. And always for these side things, you're going to work one side, then the other. Next up, let's talk about a plank. We're going to talk first about the side plank. Um, because I was just in side lying. Your side plank can be one of a couple of ways. Um, let's talk about gravity. When I am in a plank here, like I'm on my knees and with my hand underneath my shoulder or here, right? This becomes more challenging than this. My length, my lever is longer. Remember I said repetitive stress. Half of us have carpal tunnel. You can always come here. The challenge is the closer I come to the earth with my body, the more challenging this becomes. 
right? It's almost like a full plank. So I can come here. If I want more challenge, I can stack my feet one on top of each other. I don't think I can do it without lifting my hand. And you can, yeah, lift the top leg, top arm. All right, so side plank. Here, here, here. I'm having a computer issue. We're just gonna tap it. Okay, are all options. All right, let's talk about seated before we go to the full on plank and hopefully that side plank is somewhat clear. If not, I think you'll see it'll become more clear when I do the full on plank. All right, so teaser. Again, I want the spine to stay nice and long. None of this and none of this. Hands behind me on my wrist or my elbows, doesn't matter. Pick up, extend, chest up. You can do some leg lowers here. You could even do some leg circles. Do you want to take the arms out of it and come here? Ooh, see that rounded little pop that happened? Not good for somebody in one of the O's. The longer your legs are here, the more challenging it's going to be. The taller you are, essentially. So, teaser. What I want to say about teaser and also either the side plank or the front plank, for those movements or exercises, think about timing yourself. Most of us have a stopwatch on our phone or whatever. If a second hand on a, a clock on the wall. Aim for till you fatigue. You might start at 10 seconds, but add on. Eventually you'll, add, you'll get up to a minute. It'll take you a while though. And with the side um, planks, one side's always gonna be harder or stronger than the other. Okay, now we're gonna come to our hands and knees. Now remember, I said this is a place where it's okay to come to that rounded shape. It's also okay to take a little side shape. Again, with obliques. Now, a lot of times in yoga, we'll do this tail walk, where, where I just bring one hip over, I kind of look back at it. It's kind of easy breezy. There's no muscle tension, right? But I can create tension by activating or shortening the distance between my rib cage and my hip in this position to work those obliques. Those obliques that cause rotation in the spine, or torso, maybe is a better word. All right, I can do that cat cow, right? And when I'm here, I can really pull my spine up and look back, creating um, a little bit of heat in the core. I can tuck my toes, and this is a modified version of a plank. And I can hover. I can make it harder. If I'm making my levers longer, I can add an arm reach. If I'm not ready for that from this hands and knees, I can reach one arm. The other one, I can reach an arm and a leg at the same time. And for the big kahuna, same arm, same leg, same side. All right, next up is plank. I'm gonna grab another prop. So plank, I talked about it before. I can be, this is kind of a plank. If I just shift my hands forward, a little bit more of a plank. If I shift my knees back, Hands are always underneath my shoulder. So my spine is nice and long. I don't have any booty up in the air, right? This is a plank. Probably one of, this is probably one of the more beginning versions. Next step, next step. You can also reach one arm. You can reach one leg. Or any variety of that. From this kneeling position, you could also crawl forward crawl backward, keep the spine long. Um, the other version of plank, which again becomes a little bit more challenging, is I'm down on my forearms. I'm going to keep my elbows underneath my shoulder. Sometimes people kind of bring their hands in. I'm okay with that as long as your elbows are underneath your shoulders, but my preferred position is with my palms down. And again, I can be here on my knees 
Hopefully spine is nice and long. I can be on my toes. I can be on one leg. I can hold it on one leg. All right. Next up, I'm going to talk about the push-up. Again, the longer your arms, legs, torso are, the harder this becomes. Most of you who know me in person know I'm like five foot ten. So I, and I have long arms. So this becomes challenging. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'm going to do everything from my knees, but know that if you are capable, it can be done from your toes. So if I want to work the backs of my arms, right, a lot of people get that little bat wingy thing happening. This muscle is right above that bat wingy thing. The tricep. So I'm going to come to that plank position. My elbows are aiming toward my body. I'm, I'm kind of corkscrewing my um, palms into the mat and I'm aiming my elbows behind me and I can lower and then push back up. Sorry about that part. I didn't get there today. She already worked out once. All right. So that's one version. The other version, if you want to focus on your chest, and I'm going to turn a little bit sideways. I'm going to broaden my arms just a little bit and elbows come out to the side. I can lower and lift kind of the traditional man or army push up that drives the work more to your chest. I didn't say that that plank position is whole body work. Your heart rate will start to pick up. Everything will start to shake whole core. It's working all those posture muscles on the backside. You don't want your spine to get saggy waggy, right? It has to stay nice and stiff like this thing is, right? As you lower lift. Um, and again, you can work on your wrist and your knees, your wrist and your toes. If you are challenged, here's another version. Now, you might have an ottoman or a couple of yoga blocks or some other something at home. Um, this is a, a, a prop I have for something else. I can do my planks here. When, let me turn it sideways. Remember I talked about gravity and the closer I get to the floor? So from here, this is farther away from the floor than this, right? So this is an easier version. I still want to have my hands underneath my um, shoulders and I can lower in that narrow position to work my triceps. And this is not long enough, but I could do the chest position too. And I could also be on my toes. So this would kind of be a, a or definitely would be a modification. So easier than wrist than um, elbows, more challenging. Unfortunately, you can't do push-ups on your elbows. So that's out. All right, one last thing. A lot of people have um, pieces of exercise equipment that they buy online, or you see an infomercial. And one of those is an ab roller. Now, I don't happen to have an ab roller, but I have a Pilates something. It's the same idea. For an ab roller, for lack of anything better, it's usually a piece of equipment that you would put your hands on and then there's a big wheel in the center and you can move this away from you. Let me see if I can make one. Oh. Well, imagine that this was right through the center and then you could roll this. All right. If you happen to have one of those, that is also osteoporosis safe. As long as you stay with a nice long spine and you never add any twist to it. So I'm going to simulate that here. You have to be able to do the plank. I would suggest that you are able, um, before you move to this, this adds some instability, which is always more challenging. So from here, I'm going to come down to my plank shape. All right, my hands are underneath my shoulders. And then as I move the roller out away from me, the good thing about this kind that I have, it can be done on your forearms. A true ab roller can't. But it just comes out and back in. And this lengthens the lever. 
and makes things more challenging also while creating instability. So let me just take a double look here at everything. I think I went through everything. I think we, we did lying on your back, we did hands and knees, we did sideline, and then we did um, um, a little bit of seated with teaser. All right, so I, I think, and then the full on planks. Um, so I think I hit everything. If you have questions about this, don't hesitate to email me. Most of you know where to get me. All right, good luck on your abs.